So today I'm going to take a look at a ranger inspired file manager by the name of Hunter and I really wanted this program to be good but in its current state I honestly can't recommend it but maybe it'll be fun to look at anyway. So if you're new to the channel you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So this is the GitHub page for Hunter. We'll have a look through this in just a moment but let's just actually jump into the actual program itself and see what it's like. So we just run the Hunter and this is what it looks like. Now, I despise this color scheme. I wish I could slightly change some stuff around. I know it's using my terminal color scheme, but I don't like this yellow being on the blue or the red being on the blue. I don't believe there's a way to theme it right now. So that's a little annoying, but it does do some stuff that is kind of nice. So being a Ranger inspired file manager, it lets you move around with your Vim keys like you would expect. I'll just chuck on screen key so you can see what I'm pressing. So you can move around with the Vim keys, nothing too special there. You can select a bunch of things by pressing space and then you can just scroll down. You can then do things like invert the selection. You can clear the selection. Uh, you can select some stuff. And then I think it, what, what's the key for that? There's a key to actually just show nothing but the selection. So that is, filter so if we go alt v uh, alt capital v sorry that'll just show the selection so it does a lot of the basic things that you would expect a ranger inspired file manager to do you can sort stuff by a bunch of different methods so name size uh, modify time and then you can do it uh, backwards if we do reverse sort that's r so you can sort it backwards by modify time backwards by name and backwards by the other one, but it's not actually showing the correct thing there. That's interesting, okay. But yeah, so as I said, it does a lot of those things and it has some cool stuff that Ranger doesn't have, like it shows you how much is in a folder and it will show you if something is a, but a sim link. It'll show you that it's like pointing to somewhere. It'll show a different color as well, like Ranger and LF do as well, but it'll also show that it's pointing to a place. So you have a very clear idea that it's actually a sim link to a place, which is all really nice stuff. Like, if it didn't have the problems that I had with it, I would really recommend this file manager. And it's also supposed to support things like image previews. So if we just find my image folder. So it's also sp supposed to support image previews, but this is where we start getting to the serious, serious problems with this program. Now, I don't know if it's just a problem on my system but I've tried to install the latest release through the methods that it suggests. So the way that it discusses it is through the cargo build or through building it through source. So there's also an AUR package, but the AUR package is really out of date. So don't bother running that one. It's a complete waste of time to run that one. You're going to want to actually install it from source. Now, the problem here is that I don't know if this is a Rust problem or if it's a problem on my system or what it is. The latest build fails because I can't install GStreamer Sys, whatever it's, GStreamer Player Sys or whatever it's called, something along those lines. And that causes the build to fail every single time. So what I have to do to get it to actually install is to go the no default features method, which won't actually give me the image previews. And that's a really, really big problem with this program because the image previews on the older version, they're really cool. It doesn't work properly with Kitty like it's supposed to. So up here, it shows you that you can actually get Kitty previews and that would be awesome. But in the older version, it doesn't work. In the current version, it doesn't work. And this isn't just a problem trying to build from the master branch because the version that you're building from Cargo is the latest release, the 1.3.5 release. And in that release, it's completely broken. And it doesn't actually stop there though. Before we get to that though, to be fair, I did notice if you go to the master branch here, you'll see that there's actually a kitty fix branch. So I'm guessing that in the next version of the program, they're probably going to have the kitty previews fixed and hopefully the problems with cargo are fixed as well. I don't, as I said, I don't know if that's an issue on their end or if that's an issue with Rust itself. So I can't really say what the problem is there. If you're installing it perfectly fine on your system, maybe it's just a problem with my computer. But here's where we get to the next problem. So we looked at the documentation down here for the key bindings. Okay, so some of the key bindings are completely wrong in this documentation and they're not documented anywhere else. So for example, let's just bring up Hunter again. 
So if you look at the keys for left and right, it says B and left for left and F and right for right. Okay, but we know that that's not true because L and H go left and right. Okay, but what does B actually do? So if we press B, B actually lets you assign a bookmark. So if we press F now, that'll actually assign a new bookmark. So if we just bring up my bookmark list, we'll see that there's two in here. So we've got one for just the bookmark list key, which is really confusing. And also one on the home directory like we set just before. Okay, so what does F do then? Nothing by the looks of it. So there's another one in here that I did notice. There's probably some others that I haven't come across yet. But if we go down to hidden. So the way to toggle hidden, I have no idea. You can toggle it from when you're opening up the program or in the config file, but toggle hidden is bound to H, which is not what toggle hidden is actually bound to. So I, I don't know what that's supposed to be bound to. Another one I found was folds. So there's a thing about folds in here. I, I don't know how to do anything with folds. So maybe if we select some stuff, will that fold? No. Tab, does that do anything? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what a fold is in this either. There's just very little documentation about how stuff works. So most of the other keys are bound correctly. At least those are the ones that I've found that are a problem. But there's, there's no reference to some of this stuff in here. And some of the stuff just isn't bound correctly in their documentation. And that by itself is enough for me not to want to recommend this program. But that's not even the end of it. So there's some more stuff that just doesn't work. So if we go up a little bit. We go to where keys are rebound. So you can supposedly rebind keys. I say supposedly for a very good reason, because I, I don't think you can. So let's do what it says. So in our .config folder in hunter slash keys, so I'll just bring up a good file manager. So if we go into the .config folder, into the hunter folder, into the keys file. So the way you're supposed to be able to rebind keys is like this. So the name of the command equals and then the key you want to press. Okay, that, that makes sense. So what if we do that? So say for example, toggle hidden. Like let's say we want to have toggle hidden bound to Z. So Z is actually bound to run subshell. So I'm just going to move that to something else as well. So run subshell, if we look, is bound to Z. So presumably now, because we've got toggle hidden equals Z and run subshell equals minus. Let's just put it on something even different. Let's just put it on, I don't know, M. We'll save that. Let's bring up Hunter again. So if we press Z now, it should toggle hidden. That's what you would assume would actually happen in a file manager that is working properly. It opened up a subshell. Okay. Maybe, maybe the M binding will work then. So if we bring up Hunter, we press M. Look at that. It's just not working. So there is some serious problems with the file manager and I don't know if it's just a problem with the way that I've installed it or what's going on because there's a couple of people who seem to really like this file manager. On my system though, I, I couldn't recommend it at all. And this is the only system I have to test it on. And if it's not gonna work here, I just have to assume that it's not working anywhere. So if you're a little skeptical, you might be saying, but maybe Hunter just can't find the config directory for its just default config location. And that is entirely wrong as well. So if I just show you that, we just bring up the config directory. So go into there, Hunter. So this is the config file. I've just got the default configs in here. I've changed it a little bit because it's really annoying to have the animation on by default. So let's just turn the animation on and set hidden to off. So if I just, before we save that actually, I'll just bring up Hunter on a separate window. So if we look in here, we have all of our hidden files shown. And also we have our animations turned off. So it feels a little bit snappier. So now let's save this and actually open up another instance of Hunter and just see what it's gonna do. So all of the hidden files are now not being shown and we have animations on. So it can find the config directory, but you know, it just, doesn't have the ability to read its config file for keys. So that's that's lovely, I guess. Maybe it's just not available in the 1.35 release, but it's not made clear at all on the GitHub page that that's the case. So I have to just assume that the feature is broken right now. 
I know that I've been very negative about Hunter throughout this entire video, but that doesn't mean I absolutely hate the program. Once a lot of these problems are fixed, I'll be more than happy to make another video saying, this is now a really good terminal file manager, and you should probably run this if you don't want to run LF and do everything yourself, or you don't want to run Ranger and have this really slow Python program as your file manager. Because this does have a lot of the features that I really do miss from Ranger, but I don't like them enough that I'm willing to run something as slow as Ranger is. So for example, we have things like tabs. Now I don't use tabs much, and I could use them with tmux, but it would be nice just to have them within LF natively, because I don't really want to have to run tmux just for tabbing within my file manager. And the other one that I miss is image previews. Now you can do image previews within LF, but you can only do like ASCII or Unicode previews. You can't do full proper previews that you could do within Ranger. So there is some work to actually get that working within LF, but the main dev doesn't really care about it and the guy who was working on it has kind of just gone missing because he has other things to work on. And that's entirely fair. And I don't miss image previews enough to go back to Ranger, but if I had this nice middle ground, and maybe if we could customize the color scheme easily, I would be more than happy to use this as my day-to-day -day driver. So I don't want to end this video on a negative note. We'll talk about one thing that I did want to mention earlier. I just kind of slipped my mind. So that was tabbing. So if you want to make a new tab, let's just make a couple of them. You can press Control T. So that leaves us with five tabs there. Let's just actually make another one. So if we want to then close some tabs, we can use Control W. Let's just leave ourselves with four of them. We can also cycle through the tabs with tab and it's cyclic which is always nice and you can go backwards with uh, shift tab. Once again that's also cyclic. I really don't like tabbing systems when they're not just because it's a real pain to just cycle through everything if you have to hit one border and then go backwards and hit the other and then go the other direction. I don't like that. Just give me cycles. They're always nice to have. And the last thing you can do with tabs is jump directly to a tab with the F keys. My one problem with this though, is that they're indexed from zero, whereas the F keys are indexed from one. So if we press F1, that'll jump us to tab zero. If we press F4, that jumps us to tab three. Now, I wish this was indexed by one. It would just be a little bit easier to work out exactly which key to press. But once you get used to it, it's fairly easy to work out what you have to press. So I don't typically run tabs a lot, but there is a few occasions where I do want to have them. So I know that I could run Tmux, but I don't really want to. But basically, occasionally I'll have, say I'm doing something in one window of LF, like I want to go through my scripts or something, and then I want to do something in another window. The only way to do that without tabs is to have two instances of LF open at the same time. Now, this isn't usually a problem, but occasionally I'll have a lot of windows open, and I don't really have space to have two full instances open. So it is nice in those rare times to actually have tabbing. Now, I could just use Tmux, but once again, I kind of prefer having native tabbing within my file manager. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this video. I'm not going to go through the rest of the key bindings. If you want to run this program and look at them yourself, feel free to do that. And yeah, basically, I don't recommend this program in its current state, but I can definitely see that once these problems are fixed, it can be a really, really good program that I would probably recommend just over Ranger. I don't like Ranger because it's just really, really slow. And it's not just because it's a Python program. It also just does way too much that doesn't really need to be doing. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist of this videos in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got all of my social links. So if you want to chat with me on Discord or you want to see my Telegram or anything like that, then go check those out. I've also got all of my support links down below. So if you want to donate to my Patreon, then go ahead and do that. But obviously, if you don't feel like doing that, then you don't have to. And I've also got all of my alternate video platforms. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, then go check out my library and also my BitTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me now. And I'm out.